Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, coming to this session titled Java Analytical Models and Big Data, End User Programming in a Spreadsheet Environment. Uh, there's a lot that we are going to be trying to cover today, and uh, we have a few slides, but mostly we'll be showing you uh, some live examples, some practical examples, and, and code examples. But first, uh, a short introduction of, of the two of us. Uh, my name is Chris Thorlevson, and, and this is August Eilson. Uh, we are the co-founders of a company called Quantcell Research. My background is in uh, uh, product management and, and software product man management and, and, and marketing. And I used to be with Sun Microsystems for almost eight years. And I think what, 10, 12 years ago, I was a product manager for Java. And uh, August, he received his uh, PhD in mathematics from UC Berkeley. He was a professor at UC Berkeley for a number of years and uh, elsewhere. And uh, he also has background in, in biotech and in financial services, where he was heading uh, quantitative uh, research teams and, and risk management teams. So August is the, is the inventor and the creator of the environment that we will be using uh, to run uh, our demo today. Also joining us here is, is one of our team members, Björn Jonsson. So after the session, you can you know, approach any of us if you have any specific questions. Um, so what we're going to be covering here today, as the title suggests, is end-user programming in, in a spreadsheet environment, end-user programming in Java in a spreadsheet environment, and in particular, how such an environment can be used to build uh, Java-based analytical models and, and big data analysis. So. You might ask, why? what does Java have to do with, with, with spreadsheets? So spreadsheets, if you think about a spreadsheet, it is probably the most popular uh, end-user programming tool and modeling uh, tool around. But the most spreadsheets that we know have, have some limitations and, and uh, only allow you to work with two object types, uh, namely numbers and text. But what if you could uh, actually bring in all the capability of Java into the spreadsheet environment and, and benefit from the, from the, from the spreadsheets, meaning that um, uh, the spreadsheets basically shorten turnaround times, uh, offer dynamic execution, allow the user to build the model one expression at a time, and have integrated testing and debugging. So if you bring Java into that environment and allow the user essentially to initiate any Java object or, or Java API in a spreadsheet cell, you have a very powerful environment for building uh, analytical models. So that's kind of what we're going to be covering today. Um, we will start with a, uh, a simple example to, to, uh, to get a, introduce the concept. And, and then move on to uh, some more advanced analysis. We have some practical examples where we are using uh, libraries such as Open Gamma for financial mathematics and, and BioJava for, for uh, biotech analysis. And we have some data visualization also. And then uh, we also have a, an example where we are, uh, or big data example, where actually we are uh, running, uh, uh, using MapReduce uh, and, and doing a big data analysis using MapReduce and then uh, connecting to the Amazon cloud as a backend for the spreadsheets, as a computational engine for the spreadsheet. Um, we also cover things uh, that um, have to do with, with JVM performance, how the end user, how the spreadsheet user can take advantage of the, of the JVM uh, and also take advantage of job optimization, concurrency, and, and garbage collection. And uh, so that's kind of the summary of what we're going to be talking about. And, uh, before I hand it over to August, I just want to make a little observation that that we have seen in, in the in the Java community. We have you know we are in the analytics. We are looking at analytics libraries all day. We are we support a number of these analytic libraries, Java-based analytic libraries, and there is an explosive growth in the Java community around libraries for all kinds of analytics. Uh, Hadoop, of course, with, with big data is, is getting a lot of buzz, but there are a number of other initiatives, domain-specific. Projects such as BioJava, Open Gamma, uh, Vega for artificial intelligence, Geometry Development Kit, and a number of others, and um, there are more projects like that being uh, 
initiated and, and the growth that we're seeing in these projects is just really, really great. So the analytical toolkit, if you will, in the Java ecosystem that's available is very comprehensive and it's, it's supported by a, very, by a very active active community. So with that said, I uh, hand it over to, to August. Yeah, hi, so you can hear me clearly, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so the agenda. Now, well, so like Chris said, we're gonna be talking about Java, we're gonna be talking about Java FX, we're gonna be talking about end use programming, and we're gonna be talking about, or introducing our, our big data spreadsheet. Now, our goal here is to, is, is to explain carefully how non-developers, uh, end users, can benefit from, from Java technologies that are normally only reserved for developers. And uh, so why spreadsheets? Why is, why is that uh, part of this, this, this session? Well, so tra like Chris said, traditionally, end user programming has uh, always been achieved in a spreadsheet environment. And uh, the, the reasons why end users prefer to use the spreadsheet is, uh, well, let's, let's uh, name a few. Well, the first one probably is that in the spreadsheet, there's no user interface design. Now, but s since we're here at Java 1, it's sort of interesting to, to take notice that uh, there are at maybe 10 or at least 10 sessions on, on user interface design. And uh, that tells us immediately that user interface design can't be that simple. Uh, there has to be something complicated there. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the end users don't, don't really touch that field at all. So that's one reason. Another reason is that, another reason why the uh, spreadsheet is preferred by end users is that in the, in the spreadsheet environment, then writing programs, debugging programs, and executing programs, uh, as well as, as refactoring programs, all happens in one environment, in, in one interface. It's all combined into one. Now, another reason end users prefer to use the spreadsheet, of course, is uh, it's expression-based and it allows for allows for experimentation, uh, trial and error, and, 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 uh, and, and, and stuff like that. Now, what, what all this means to the end user is that turnaround times get shortened, and that's what the end user is seeking, shorter turnaround times. Uh, so as a consequence of all of this, we have uh, approximately 50 million power users of spreadsheets already today. But then the question becomes, why Java? Well, so, if, if, so let's think of an analyst or a domain expert or a quant in a financial institution or, or in some other, in, in some other enterprise. And, um, and, uh, and, and you realize immediately that, that the domain expert benefits from, or could benefit from uh, Java performance, having access to high performance computing and, uh, and, and having access to big data analytics and, and being able to create solutions which are deployment ready. Uh, a lot of the solu solutions created in end user programming environments today uh, are not deployment ready. You have to basically do a rewrite in order to put the, whatever the end user is doing into production. Now, but today in the world we're living right now, it, 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 it's, it benefits the end user even more than what, what we just mentioned, to have access to, to Java APIs, direct access to Java APIs, something that's really only available if you're a developer using an IDE. Right, so um, of course we, um, we realize that uh, it's not enough just to combine Java and the spreadsheet in order to achieve end user programming. We, we, we need to uh, address other issues. For example, we need to uh, provide the user with uh, intuitive access to, uh, to private and public data sources. We need to assist the user in, with uh, accessing and using algorithms. We need to create wizards for, to, to help the user write code and, uh, and so on and so on. Lots of different UI controls and, and things that need to be created in order to make the user independent in, in, in this environment. So, so let's look at an example. So what I'm going to what I'm going to show you first is uh, is an example where we uh, where we connect to a a 
a public data source or public data sources and uh, and to do some simple analysis using the data in, in the in the spreadsheet environment so let's uh, let's turn on the uh, the application that we wanted to introduce here it is so uh, yeah so already opened up a couple of applications so just to, to save time here now this is a this is a simple example the first thing you see is that uh, it's a spreadsheet. It looks like a spreadsheet, and uh, it has text and numbers in it. Uh, the, the way for a developer to think of this is, it, is uh, you think of this as a spreadsheet or, or a Java IDE with a spreadsheet interface. Now, you can go into any of those cells, and you can write Java code, which, uh, and Java code which returns an object, and that object will be, will be named, the, the, the variable name will, will be the cell name, will become the cell name, and you'll be able to use the uh, variable just like you would with any other variable in any other IDE, except, of course, it has been instantiated and calculated for you. So, so like I said, we've got text and numbers like, and formulas like any other spreadsheet. But uh, let's look at this cell here, for example, in, in C5. So C5 is actually a uh, data source. This, con this cell, I hope you can see this. It's kind of small. Uh, but... Uh, we, we can, we can uh, if, if you can't see it, we could probably put in a text, ed a text editor and, and, and look at it a little bit more carefully that way. But, um, but anyway, what it does, it connects to a data source, and, uh, it, uh, and there are some ticker symbols and so on which uh, specify the data that has to be brought into the system or, or, or that you're connecting to. So, so the user has to have some way of creating those expressions. This is just a regular Java expression. You see the, 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 the new command there and, and, and so on. Uh, just like you would do in a, in a regular spreadsheet, except the left side is a little bit odd. It, it tells you just what the data type is and the, uh, and the dependencies. In this case, there are no dependencies on other cells, so, so, so it's left like that. Now, once the user has created this expression, you get some value called uh, the indication value. And the indication value is the value that you see in the cell. And, uh, and, uh, and the indication value basically tells the user what the content of, of the cell is in, in, in a short format, something that fits into the cell. If you double click on a cell, on the other hand, you get what's called the full value. And the full value is the, uh, gives you more information about the content. And, uh, and in this case, this is a graph of some kind, or well, this, this is some data, and uh, it, it tries to explain in, in, in details what, the, what, what is the content of the cell. Uh, now, but if we go back to the cell, before we do any analysis with the data, we, we're going to do a little bit of regression an analysis there, but before we do that, we should notice that, um, that this expression is not easy to write. This is, you have to know the ticker symbols for, for that, that, that the data service wants. So, uh, so, uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how the user would, uh, would actually do that. So here I've essentially just removed my expression there by, by replacing it with null. Then some of the other cells are going to become gray because you know, they depend on, on this cell and, and they can't be calculated anymore. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create, recreate this, uh, this statement using one of our wizards. So, so here's a wizard which uh, allows me to, uh, to search through data and, 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 uh, and locate data that I'm, that I'm, uh, that I'm looking for. Um, in this case, it was information about rare earth mater materials and uh, or minerals, sorry. And uh, I just pick the data that I want, uh, select the, uh, the, uh, the properties or, or whatever is the appropriate uh, dimension that I need to, need, need to select from. And then I can look at the data in, in the viewer, and then I can import it into a spreadsheet. Uh, this, is a, this is a code wizard, which all that this code wizard does is to create this expression. All it does is just to create this text expression and uh, and then I can execute it in, in the system to, uh, to have the data brought into the system and, and, and so on. So, we, so we've combined all those things we talked about earlier. We've combined writing programs, debugging programs, and executing programs. And these are, these are, these are Java programs 
in the spreadsheet environment. Now, so what is this analysis that's uh, continuing here? Well, we in, in this cell here, C6, we're actually accessing the, the, the data and getting two arrays from the data source, namely the, the time column and the world production for, for this rare, for rare earth materials. Uh, and then we do an regression anal analysis over here where we have actually brought in uh, the Apache Commons math library to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to approximate the, the incoming data with a polynomial of, of some degree and, and, and get a, a polynomial fit for the, uh, for the incoming data from the data service and, uh, and, and then, we, uh, then we actually use the, uh, the polynomial and the incoming data to, to create a chart using JavaFX. Uh, the, the, the client is based on JavaFX, the interface, and, the, uh, and, and, uh, and charting is done using JavaFX, or you can actually bring in your own, your, your own charting library like iFree or something to, to, to charting if you want to. So, uh, so here we have the, uh, the, the, the second column in the double array in cell C6, and here we have the, uh, the data from the, uh, from the uh, polynomial regression function. Now, and if I double click on this, it, it should uh, show me some information about the cell, and of course one of this information is gonna be the actual chart where we have fitted the, the data, uh, where we created a polynomial to fit the, uh, to approximate our data. And, and then we use the polynomial to, uh, to predict world production for, for some future years. Now, and, and again, all of this is dynamic. If I wanted to change the, uh, the degree of the polynomial from, five, from three to five, then I just did that, and we can continue to uh, you know, look at the new result, so on, using the, uh, the FX charting that's in here. Now, here's another example. Uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, an example where we, are, where we brought in BioJava. So BioJava is a, is a nice, powerful library created by, by universities, both here in California and, 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 and overseas. It's, uh, it's used for bioinformatics. And one of the things they have, that have is, a, is, is, is an object like this one called File Reader, which allows you to connect to a central source of, of protein information or, or molecules, and you basically submit a string to the service, and it'll fetch a protein description file from the service um, in, into whatever system you're working with. So, and, and just like in any other IDE, all you have to do in order to take advantage of BioJava in this particular system is you have to download it from the, from the, from the consortium and you have to place it in, in your class path, and then it's ready to use in, 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 the, in, in the system. So BioJava has certainly become, has, has become like your function library in, in the system once, once you do that. Now if we double click on, on the source, we see that there's the, uh, on, on the data source, we see there's a method there called um, uh, get, uh, get structure by IT is here somewhere. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Get structure and get structure by IT, right? So, uh, so, so let's actually just enter that expression in here. Let's say, uh, let's say we want. Yeah, so the cell is C4, get the uh, structure by ID, and then, is this correctly spelled, struct? So like the keyboard is all, all skewed by ID. Well, if it's not right, we're gonna get an error message, which is fine as well. And then let's input the string, which is in, in C, C5. Um, Let's execute this. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh, there's a T there, right? Right, so now we got it correct. Now we got the, and, and one thing, you know, in our system we use code completion and all these technologies that developers have access to. This version doesn't show you that, but that's, that's, uh, 
uh, it's there. So these kind of mistakes where you do spelling errors and so on, you know, of course, you know, just like you're used to in your IDE, this is not an actual problem. Um, so now we have the, have the molecule or the protein in our cell. If we double click on it, we get a, a 3D viewer actually in this case where we can uh, actually do analysis right there in the user interface with, with, uh, without uh, any, any more work. And, uh, and we can do some measurements. We can, of course, you know, play with it a little bit um, and, and, and do some analysis using the, uh, the tools that come with uh, this viewer. Now, it turns out that uh, this is actually a lot of, this is a lot of power to the end user for just writing that one formula. Remember, all that the end user did was to write this expression, get structured by ID. So, um, so now I, I, I wanted to show you also how we would uh, how we use Java syntax here to uh, to write functions and create functions in the environment or methods would be the correct term for Java, but we think of these as functions because we're in the spreadsheet environment now. Here we have a, a, a function which, which we call center. It returns a, an array and uh, a double array. And what it does, it takes the, uh, the, the weighted uh, average, it takes the weighted average of, uh, of all the uh, atoms in the molecule and returns that as a position vector. So this would be the, uh, the center of gravity for the, uh, for the uh, molecule. And let's actually, um, let's actually, Let's actually apply that function to the uh, variable over there. So the function is in C6, and uh, and it's called center, and the uh, and the molecule is in C8. So so here we should be. Here we should have the result. Oops, I actually put it here, but not to worry. We'll just move it around. Anyway, so so here we have the uh, have the center of gravity for the. Uh, for, for the molecule, if you double click on it, this, we see the position vector and, and we done, done a little bit of analysis and, uh, and access some data and so on from, from various sources. All right, let's move on with the slides. Now, <clears throat> like Chris mentioned quickly uh, as well in his introduction, one of the things we've seen is uh, we, we, know, we, we see that there is explosive growth in, in publicly available libraries that uh, can be accessed from the spreadsheet. And just to name a few, we got Open Gamma for financial an analysis, we got Vega for data mining, we got BioJava that we just looked at, we got um, big data frameworks, of course, Hadoop and so on, and Mahout for, for AI as well. Now, what we've seen is that these libraries are growing. There's a, there's a lot of interest in them, and they're becoming more and more capable. And the number of projects is always increasing. So, so this is this is a, a trend which is which is uh, nice to observe and and is important for this environment. Now, if we look at the the, uh, the number of Java lines in each of those uh, libraries, just to name a few, of course, we see that the libraries are becoming quite big and. And that means that the, well, we, yeah, that, that should mean at least, uh, and it does mean in these cases, that, that the uh, libraries are coming more and more capable and uh, they're becoming more and more important for the end user to have access to those libraries directly. Same thing with uh, big data frameworks, a uh, lot of interest, explosive growth, and, uh, and the value of those libraries is becoming incredible. So let's, let's uh, jump back to our, our, our application here the big data spreadsheet, and, uh, and let's look at one of those libraries we just mentioned, namely Open Gamma, and, uh, and again, we are in, an, in a spreadsheet-based IDE, so in order to take advantage of, open, of the Open Gamma library, all you have to do is you have to download it from the, from the Open Gamma web page or, or website, and you have to include it in, in your class path or in your, in your libraries, and, uh, and, and from that point on, you can you can take advantage of the library right here, and you would use this library for, for you know, pricing derivatives and complicated financial products. You would use this for risk analysis. You would use this for portfolio management, and you would actually use it also for reporting. And um, and by bringing it into this environment, it becomes well, it becomes your function collection, your function library in the spreadsheet. Um, 
and, and you can play, play around with it just like we did with the other libraries to get different results and, and build models. Now, once you have built something in the system, you need to deploy it. You need to deploy it into production somewhere. And this is, this is uh, something we, we, we work very hard on. We allow you to deploy into specific production systems. But then, on the other hand, anything you build in our system is a Java API. So technically, it can be, can be deployed into any, uh, any, production, uh, any Java, Java production system. Uh, even though there's a little bit more to that story a lot of the time. All right. Yeah, here we are. So, uh, so just because of how we build our, our application or the or the environment, uh, the, uh, the and this is something that that's often overlooked when it comes to end-user programming. Uh, if, if if you think about uh, some of those environments, then in to, in today's world. You, they're interpreted and, and they're uh, basically slow. Now, we, 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 on the other hand, know that the developer is, or the end user is going to benefit from the performance of Java. And, uh, and in our system, if you write an expression, then that expression gets uh, compiled to bytecode, of course, by the Java compiler, and then uh, and, and optimized at the same time. And then we have runtime optimization, such as just in time compilation, which translates the End user expression to native code on the uh, end users and in the end users environment, and I want to show you an example of of, of the difference that, that this makes, and um, and how optimization in, in, in Java and optimization in, uh, with the uh, just in time compiler, what's the benefit to the to the end user of of, uh, of having that here? So let's uh, let's look at at, the, at this example. So here we have uh, the same code we saw on the slide. It's, uh, it's, it's very short. I hope you can read this. Now, all that this code does is that it iterates about 2 billion times over, and, and, and adds one to a, a, a variable there called at. But it, it does, it's supposed to iterate 2 billion times. And uh, all it does is to measure how long that's going to take. So. So if I, you know, run this over and over again, you can see how fast these two billion iterations take in seconds. Well, if you look at this number, you see that this makes no sense. It's not possible for the uh, for my hardware to to iterate two billion times over anything in in much less than one millisecond. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is that the the Java compiler actually looked at this code and said, this loop here is useless. I'm going to just ignore it. And, and if you think about the number of tricks, uh, optimization tricks, already in the Java compiler, then you can see, well, this has to benefit the user. I mean, like now the user is getting, getting uh, adva the advantage of all, all, those, all those optimization tricks. Now, so let's change this a little bit so that uh, instead of, instead of uh, the, the compiler being able to ignore this loop, it has to actually, actually ha has to figure out what's the, uh, what the variable is there. So let's actually just add and subtract it again. Uh, uh, technically, it could ignore it, but it's not going to do that at this point. So if I execute this now, it takes a little longer. Well, but still, it's, it's about two seconds. Um, instead of almost nothing, less than one millisecond. So if it, uh, we can execute that again, it takes about two seconds or something like that. Um, so now it takes about two seconds, and that's pretty fast as well. Uh, that, that's uh, about as fast as if you had written this code using any other language, such as C or whatever. So, so we, we're still seeing the benefit of just-in-time compilation here. Now let's actually turn on a different environment over here where where I've turned off where I turned off um, I thought I turned this let's see yeah, here it is where I've turned off uh, just in time compilation and let's open this model again 
uh, where is it? It's here. Well, actually, it, it, it actually it, it remembers the value, values from my previous session, so it, 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 it pretends that this is about one millisecond as well. But if I execute this, you see it's going to take a lot longer. And um, it's actually going to take more like 28 seconds, something like that, 25 to 28 seconds, executing the same algorithm in the environment if we don't allow the just-in-time compiler to, to, uh, to, to do its thing. So, so that would, uh, that's the time we would get if this was, as actually turns out to be, what, 25 seconds. This is the time we would get if our, if our system is interpreted, like, for example, most spreadsheets are today. So you go from 25 seconds to 1.8 seconds, and then with optimization in this sort of odd case, almost zero. So that's definitely something that's beneficial, and it, it is important, especially with, uh, when you're doing hard analytics, that your system performs adequately. All right, so let's move on with the uh, examples here. You can, actually, if there are any questions, just free, feel free to ask. Any questions at this point? All right. Um, so deployment. Now, another bottleneck in end-user programming is that uh, the solutions you create using many other systems, you, the, the, you have to essentially rewrite them if you want to deploy them into your production system. Now, in our system, since the solution, since this is a Java IDE, uh, what you get is, a, is Java code, and you can deploy it in, in various environments. But, um, but I'm going to show you an example of, of where we uh, actually do some uh, big data an analysis and deploy that analysis to the to Amazon Elastic MapReduce or to Amazon Web Services. So let's go back to the up to the application here and. Uh, and look at a big data example. So, it, so what do we have here? We have here on the left side we have some analysis. We have we have some uh, observations from different uh, observatories, uh, measuring the uh, the strength of some signal coming from some stars, and uh, and these measurements have been placed in a big data file, which is located somewhere. In, in this case, it's located in. On, on, on S3, uh, on the, on, somewhere on the East Coast, Virginia, I assume. And, um, and what we want to do with this big data file, we want to go through it, we want to adjust the signal strength and calculate, a, a, and calculate the, the signal strength at the source. So we're, we're figuring out what's the brightest star or what, whatever it is that we're measuring. Uh, and, and there's some analysis we need to do, and the point here is that we're doing the analysis in the spreadsheet. Uh, here we have, we, we need some variables. Here we have a list of stars. Here we have uh, the distances of those stars from Earth in light years. And then we have a little bit of a lookup function and, and, the, uh, and the formula we're going to use to uh, adjust the, uh, the signal strength. Now, since this is MapReduce and, uh, and we're not using any, any other, we're only using raw MapReduce, and this is always going to be a little bit technical. Um, you have to write a, a mapper. You have to write a, a function which uh, takes every line in your in your big data file and parses it and and calculates the um, calculates some sort of output for each line. And here we do that. We take uh, each line. We just use the, the the split variable in Java, and we extract um, some numbers from 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 each line in in, in the in the text file, and then we. Um, then we then we uh, perform those calculations and write it to the, uh, the context variable over here. So this is a typical map job in, in big data. It's uh, it's technical, but that's that's just the way it is. Well, question. Yeah. So if I get a runtime exception, exception, it'll just uh, the, the, what's going to happen is the, the cell is going to become. Uh, it, it's going to tell me. So uh, and and we can. Uh, Let's just write so something here. This should be a runtime exception, and uh, see what happens. It just, uh, it well, well no, that, this is not a runtime exception. This is just it can't create the object. Uh, but let's, uh, what, what what would be, um, well, so, so this happens all the time, and and what happens is that 
the uh, runtime exception is, is caught, of course, and uh, and we d we display the cell as red. We, we we make sure that all the dependencies are invalid, and then we just show you the show the user the error. So the errors are just projected to the user to to work with them. Does that answer the question? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, we, every expression you put in here is encapsulated in a try uh, uh statement, and we always catch every ex exception and we bring it to the attention of the user, and uh, and then we, uh, like I said, we uh, we uh, make sure that the the tree of of dependencies gets sort of invalid invalidated. Yeah. It, it, that's the way it is. At least for expressions, it's a little bit different if you're writing methods and functions. You, you can actually explicitly put the try cuts in there as well, which is what you have to do. So, yeah, you mean because, right, here we had, yeah, here we had the, um, this is how you handle it in, 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 with the functions. Uh, but, but this is a function, so it doesn't return any value, it just returns a function. So, that, so that's, uh, that's a little different. Now, so you write it to the context, and then you want to take the max of those values. It, we do that in, in, in a reduce cell over here. This is the max. This is the max function. Just a typical max function using map reduce, uh, and we could simplify that. And we, we actually do that. We allow you to use uh, pick and, and and other frameworks, where instead of creating mappers and reducers in this way, you actually um, just write uh, SQL-like code. To, uh, to express your, your big data analytics or your big data problems. Then here on the, um, on the right side, we have our connection to Amazon. And this could be connection, to, well, this is connection to Amazon, but uh, it, this works for Cloudera and other, other systems as well. Uh, and uh, essentially what you need to do, you need to configure, and, 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 and we don't really ask the user to do that. We use wizards to generate this or templates. You need to base, you need to tell your object where are my credentials, meaning where is my password and and and, and my username, uh, where's my mapper that's in cell C15, where's my reducer that's in cell C16. We just looked at that, and then where's my big data file and where's my directory on the Amazon cloud, and then then you have configured your connection to the uh, to to Amazon, and then you can uh, start you know any any analysis you get here will be submitted to to the uh, to, to the Amazon Web Services. Now, once you're, once you're finished with the output, you actually execute this using cell G15. You just, you just say run. But, uh, but when you're finished, you can get the, if, if the output is, uh, is not uh, big data, if the output is, is uh, something you, you want to retrieve into the spreadsheet, you can, you can do that. Uh, if, if you just enter the first part here, you'll get a reference to the output. If you, if you if you write this whole thing, you actually get uh, the system to bring in the uh, result of the analysis into a, into a hash map into your into your environment. So if I double click on this, I, ex I, I, I see the results from Amazon over here uh, of the map reduce uh, uh, task, and then I can use uh, FX or Java FX uh, charting to. Uh, to view the, view the output if I wanted to, uh, or I can use, like we, like we said earlier, any other charting library that's available to me. So, so a couple of more things here. Now, the deployment to Amazon is completely independent of the spreadsheet. You just get, uh, you, you can look in, into, into the user uh, packets, and you, you'll see the, the uh, the appropriate uh, Java code to which you can use either in the spreadsheet like we're doing here or you can bring that into any other system that you like um, and another thing is if, if I change any of those numbers it's I, I, I can decide I'm, it's gonna submit the job again to Amazon or it's gonna or I'm gonna wait and change some more numbers do some more debugging before I submit it but let's just uh, Let's just do that. So now what's, what, what, it is, what the system is doing, it's retrieving a new session ID and, uh, and talking to Amazon, uh, setting up those five machines, that's the default value of number of machines we have in, in, in this setting. 
and um, it's gonna work on this problem for as long as it takes and, 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 and it's gonna return the results back here. Now, if I save this, uh, let's actually do that, uh, or we can actually have, have the system automatically save those values, then, and I can email this model to someone else, and, or I can, you know, I, I can turn off my computer, and when I open it up again, it'll connect to the Amazon server and, um, and figure out what's the status of the job, if it's completed or not, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and so on. So, so this is a, a, a nice way and a simpler way to work with, the, with Amazon Web Services than definitely having to package everything into a jar and submit it to Amazon and get the result back in, in some, some complicated way. So while this is crunching, it's gonna take about 10 minutes or so, or five or 10 minutes, but let's uh, go back to the, um, let, let's go back to the slides here. Right, so, so one thing we've noticed, there's a lot of talk about, uh, well not, I mean this is everywhere, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of talk about the uh, talent gap in big data analytics, and this talent gap, meaning that essentially we need more people who are data scientists and, and, and they are able to work with big data analytics, this talent gap has resulted, or this talk about the, the talent gap has resulted in a couple of applications which uh, address big data analytics using spreadsheets. So this is one of the driving force behind creating an application like this one, or creating an IDE like this one. Uh, any questions on the, on the big data? problem but before we continue all right so so because of how we because of how we use Java and the JVM uh, and and have, and are using a spreadsheet based IDE then the applications created by the end user in this system are are mostly threaded by default and uh, and the user can also use Java concurrency and, and, and other technologies to, uh, to distribute the work on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the available hardware that the user has access to. And I want to show you examples. First, I want to show you an example what we mean by multi-threaded by default, and then I want to show you a, a fork and join algorithm for uh, implemented in this system. So, um, right, so let's... Um, Let's go back to the system, and uh, this is still running. And let's look at another example. So this example here is, is just a simple game. What it, what it has is there's a function here which waits for some number of seconds, and, uh, and the, uh, the top row represents um, number of seconds, and the, and the leftmost column represents uh, number of seconds of, as well, of course. And then everything is intertwined uh, in different ways, uh, so that uh, if you s start s some sort of a calculation here, then that calculation is gonna wait, have to wait for all the calculations to finish and so on, and, uh, I, I, and, uh, and the, but the important thing is that nothing freezes up and the calculations wait for each other in, in the correct way. So here we have just changed one of those numbers and uh, we got all those red, all, all this red color there representing cells that are being executed. Um, now let's change something else, and we get red and blue. Red meaning warm, meaning that the uh, that there's there's calculation happening, and blue meaning that they're waiting. So it's like uh, like hot to cold, and uh, and uh, and so on. So the um, so we can change things in, in in any number of ways, and the system is going to respond correctly. And, uh, and uh, you can even change the code and so on while the, while the, uh, while the system, system is running and you get um, without messing up, 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 up your, your, your application. Now, what we call this, we call this support for long running operations. And, um, and, and the reason we need support for long running operations is because we're allowing the user to connect to databases, to big data clouds and to other systems and um, and we want the user to, uh, to be able to work in the spreadsheet even while some other analysis is going on. All right, so here's, an, here's another example where we talk about concurrency. Uh, this is a, uh, a fork and join algorithm. And uh, 
which we have written in the spreadsheet. This, so this is a little bit advanced. I, I, I would assume that most users would, would not want to do this. Uh, what we have, what we've done here, we, well, this is actually a sort of basic example, though. But anyway, uh, we created a, a recursive f a function called recursive. Uh, this function uh, has, takes the input of an array and uh, a, a starting number and an end number, and then it has to calculate the, um, calculate the, uh, and then, and then there, it has this method compute, which calculates the sum of the array from start to, or from, in this case, low to high. Um, it uses a threshold variable, which determines if the, if the uh, number of, of values is, is, uh, is, is small, I'm gonna just do the calculation myself, otherwise I'm gonna fork the job and, uh, and, uh, and divide it into, into two diff different parts using the, uh, the fork and join algorithm. The, uh, the nice thing about the fork and join algorithm is that um, using this algorithm, you, you're able to, uh, or, or using fork and join, you're able to distribute computation among a pool of threads and without, uh, without creating um, too much overhead. Essentially, you're able to reuse the threads that are not working, that are not uh, running at, at any given time, and, uh, and, and this becomes extremely efficient and takes care of uh, or, or, or takes uh, advantage of, of all the resources on your hardware. So here we have the, uh, the fork and join algorithm, and here we have a sum function which defines the, the, the fork and join pool, and, uh, and, uh, and issues the uh, it's just the, uh, and, and calls the recursive function from zero to, to its length, but the input here is, is, uh, is just the, the, uh, the array. Now, uh, so I'm gonna experiment with this a little bit, and um, so in order to do that, I had to create an array, and we just use, a, use Java random, the random generator in, in Java to create uh, an array of whatever size that I wanted, and uh, and uh, let's see how this works. So, so here we have, um, well, here we have 10,000, an array of size 10,000, uh, and this happens pretty fast, we don't really see it. Here we have an array of size 100,000, this happens pretty fast as well. Here we have an array of size 1 million, this is pretty fast as well. Here we have an array of size 10 million, it takes a little bit of time to, act. so what, what it's doing, it's actually executing, it's summing up all the values using fork and join distributing all the load on all the all the cores in my computers in my computer and and, and taking advantage of the of the library here as and let's actually try this with 100 million it takes a little bit of time but it, it should be fine and it's fine now if I but but this sort of this uh, highlights another issue namely garbage collection now using the system, if you're creating big structures in memory like this, then you have to be able to garbage collect them, you have to be able to get rid of them and remove them from memory. And uh, here we're, taking, we're, we're enabling the uh, end user to take direct, uh, to directly benefit from garbage collection in the, in the, uh, in the spreadsheet environment. All right, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about garbage collection and, and we'll do that a little bit later. And, uh, and but first, uh, let's go back to the, to the uh, to the slides over here. So, so what have we learned about learned from all of this? We we learned that um, that um, it's, well, one thing we've learned is that there's a lot of users that already know how to, how to work in our system. Uh, it, what, what you've seen is that in order to use our system, you have to write code snippets, short code snippets, and it turns out that these code snippets they they look the same in in most languages. They look the same in C, C++, Python, and Java, of course, more or less. And uh, you know, our guess is that there are at least 50 million users who know how to write those code snippets already today. And uh, another thing uh, that we've learned is that, well, if your code library looks more like a function library, that's gonna, enable, that's gonna simplify its usage for the end user. So, 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 
for example, Proti Atlanta is something that is, is going to make uh, libraries look more like function libraries, and that's something that's going to make these libraries easier to use for the end user in the spreadsheet environment. We also know that we have to uh, we have to uh, allow users to uh, work with different languages, such as Scala, and Scala, use Scala expressions directly in the spreadsheet, and SQL expressions, and we uh, we, we we know that we. Uh, we're going to have to build wizards to help the user create all those more complicated, complicated things. Now, I wanted to go back and uh, show you another example. With, with uh, let's actually check on the. Uh, so here we are with here's the big data example. The uh, the job has finished. We got the new results into the spreadsheet. Just to go back to that, uh, and uh, we can look at the the new results so interactively. And uh, and, and if you want to do some more changes, we can do that and so on. Now, yeah, well, there was one more example which I wanted to show. Namely, I wanted to show sort of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the benefits of, of, of garbage collection. And, uh, and, and here's that example. So in this example, we're building, uh, this is a pricing example from finance. And uh, we're building lattices uh, to price some financial options. Now, these lattices actually are two-dimensional, and uh, you, you, uh, there's a variable in here called uh, binomial time steps, and this variable uh, essentially represents the, the number of columns and the number of rows in, in the lattice. So when you increase it, you, you, increase, the, uh, you increase the memory needed to, to store the lattice uh, exponentially. So let's uh, so let's increase this va variable and see what happens. Uh, well, it, the calculation takes a little bit of time, and let's say I go from 80 steps to 800, and now to 8,000. Uh, things begin to take uh, take too much time. So what do I do? Well, I just change the variable back to whatever number I want, and uh, the the old calculations are going are going to go away, and my new calculations are going to, of course, be much more faster. Uh, but at the same time, I'm benefiting from garbage collection because all those other structures that uh, that were taking all this time were um, were, uh, take, were had to be removed from memory in order to fit uh, the new calculations in, into into execution here. Uh, and we can play with this. We can actually have the system run out of memory, but um, and and see what what, what it's going to do. But it, it'll just give you an out of memory error. And you can recover from that even in, in our system. So we have about uh, five more minutes. And uh, we wanted to do reserve that for questions. Uh, uh, Chris, you want to? And also, um, if you have any questions afterwards or thoughts, you know, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, so at this point, is there, do you have any questions or anything you want to explore further? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, good. So, uh, if you go to our web page, there's a link there, and uh, and we will we'll get you a beta version of the system, so you can play with it. Uh, it, we're, it, it we're, we're currently in, in limited beta, right? And we're working on some of the, and uh, advancing some of the features that uh, we wanna, you know, we think are critical for the beta. But uh, so we're hoping to get it out this winter. But you can you can. Send me an email and, and uh, yeah, or just send us an email. We'll send us an email if you want to get in, into the limited beta, and you know, kind of it kind of depends what you. To Microsoft. To Python. Yeah, pivot table. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, so there, there are a couple of uh, big data spreadsheets out there. Most of those spreadsheets, what they do is they take the uh, the big data file and they map it into columns in your spreadsheet, and that's uh, that's nice, but uh, it's not really a spreadsheet. It's a it's a it's a query tool. I mean, you're you're essentially querying the big data the big data file and understanding the, uh, the structure of the big data file. And uh, all that is important, but that's, uh, it's, it's a little bit different from 
just creating general purpose models like what we are doing, or allowing the user to do, or, or, or having a, a, a spreadsheet based ID. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why would that be more right. So, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to take the uh, the spreadsheet, and uh, well, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, you mean why wouldn't we just do the same thing with Java in here? Or do the same thing, replace Java with C sharp? Right. <laughs> right. No. I mean, yeah. The, uh, the uh, it's this is a big deal though. With, uh, with Java, there's an explosive growth in those open libraries, and, and, uh, and, and the value comes from these open source libraries and publicly available libraries. And that, you don't have that with C Sharp. You don't have, you know, there's no open gamma for C Sharp, there's no quantlib for, for, for C Sharp, there's no, and, and so there, no there are millions and millions of code. MapReduce is Java. Yeah, I mean, MapReduce comes from Java. So all those, all those very, frameworks are Java-based. So, so we picked the right language. We picked, ja picked the right language, Java. But we were also lucky, because when we started this, we didn't necessarily know that. It's just in the meantime, those libraries have gr grown. And for some reason, there's an explosion in, in their capabilities. And that, that's important. The other reason is that you mentioned uh, the, 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 but, but, uh, in Excel and, and with C Sharp, it's a hybrid approach. I mean, you can you can call um, C sharp libraries from Excel, of course. But what we're doing here, we're really uh, just creating a functional language with rich type structure, with all the type structure of Java in the spreadsheet interface, and uh, and that's a, that's a, a completely different approach than than what the uh, what the uh, Excel community is doing. And uh, and this is uh, this is more like a, this is actually more like functional programming, and and that's not what they're doing. All right, is that? Well, in, in my life, all the actuaries have Excel spreadsheets that they won't live without. Yeah. And they do all kinds of pretty high-level analysis. That's right. That's right. The uh, the um, yeah. I mean, that's that's right. That's absolutely correct. There's a it's it's a popular spreadsheet, and a lot of people use it. Uh, and uh, but, the, but the benefits here come from using Java, come from you know, all the open source libraries and, and all these technologies that, and being able to take advantage of those technologies is extremely valuable. So, but you're right, Excel, of course, is used everywhere. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't hear that. You can hive. Yes. Yeah, you can use. Yeah, you can use uh, hive and pick uh, frameworks as well in the system. You, you can literally initiate any Java API in this environment. Right. And um, well, this is actually a, a Java FX client. We actually the the protein uh, viewer that we used. It's a swing viewer, so we can can benefit from all the data visualization tools that are available in Java from the inception of Java that can be initiated and brought into this environment. All right, any other questions? So okay, so thanks a lot for, for attending this session.